I watched that over and over again. You know, and I think maybe the audience will relate to this more than Heath or Eli will. But you know how sometimes you're jacking off to a porn and it's just, you can tell it's about to get too fucking weird, but you're almost there. So you just keep going back. I do not know what that's, that's like. I didn't figure you would. But. I very much. When you get surprise poop and you're just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was having fun, but I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. I just so play you, through. Yeah. <laughs> I just play through. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because moving wasn't quite enough to satiate my masochistic tendencies. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left once more is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Danyavad. Uh, that means thank you. I speak Hindi now. Oh. Learn that <laughs> from the really good subtitles. I, I gotcha. And sitting a mere 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Good. Started wearing metal plates in my shirt. No reason. I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I wonder if that'll have anything to do with the answer to this next question. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Okay. We watched The Day When the Sun Rises in the West, film that shock the world. Yes, that's it. Uh, it's the story of a group of Muslim friends who constantly meet up with each other at places from Call of Duty, <laughs> where they talk about whether or not the end times are happening. And then the end times either happen or don't happen. It's, it's, kind of, it's not clear. It's That's the entire movie. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you ever thought to yourself, I wonder what the kids of the people who made International Gorillas are up to these days, <laughs> we found out. It's this movie. 50% eighth graders using their mom and dad's camcorder and 50% fatwa. I love it. <laughs> if ever a movie could be described as fatwa bait, it's this film. Yeah, it's taken us 50 episodes to get around to finally doing a Muslim movie, but we're brave enough now, apparently. Mm. We're going to follow up the International Gorillas one. You guys are. I was against this. Everybody was listening. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this may be a long list here, but anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, uh, I am. I already started to mention it. I'm saying subtitles. This oh. was the best, worst, well, really just worst subtitles, like, possibly ever to exist. They're almost unreadable. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's like, and you guys, it, it, not everyone's going to get this joke, of course, only the three of us, but it's like reading Eli's fucking notes <laughs> yeah. and trying to figure out what it. the hell's going Fucking subtitles <laughs> brought to you by Eli's notes. It was amazing. For me, it was like reading my notes after I do spell check. So it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine as long as I don't spell check it. Those assholes turn it into English. <laughs> this was the least decipherable movie yeah. we have watched. I rewound. I was desperate for this movie to end. It is relatively short. It's like an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was one of those super duper hard ones to get through because I kept having to go back every, it was subtitled. So I couldn't look at my notes. So every yeah. time I looked down to write something, I would miss it and have to go back. And it was crazy. And there were so many notes to make on everything they said. And there was also like a ton of stuff that was super cash. But like, since we're reading the Quran, I was like, Oh, I get that. Like that's <laughs> yeah. way worse than people think that <laughs> yep. that is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that was the real bad one for me, right? Look, like you said, every time you wanted to write something on your notes, you had to look away from the screen, and then you'd look up, and you've only missed one subtitle, but the thing the next guy is saying makes no fucking sense, and you're like, okay, do I go back and find out if it makes any more sense in context, waste that time again, or do I just assume that the last thing he said had something to do with being there in the flash of eyes? Oh, my God, I was, like, diagramming sentences on my screen <laughs> in the chalk. It's, I could not... Figure this out. <laughs> so speaking of things that don't make sense, can I nominate this for best worst comedy shenanigans? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a movie last week where one character challenged another to a banana fight. <laughs> and had I known what we were going to watch this week, I would have been nominating those guys for positions at the yuck shack. <laughs> the comedy scene accompanied with cartoon sound effects oh my in this movie is so baffling that I actually thought the sound was coming from somewhere else in my home. 
<laughs> I was like, did you? I turned to Anna. I was like, did you change your cell phone ring? And she was like, no, they're doing. This is how they it's tell bit. us it's comedy. I, I, the spring <laughs> got flicked. I guess. Yeah, I was going to go with best worst Foley art in general. That scene really, really does stand out, obviously, as the worst it ever gets. But there's so much just insane shit. Like, why would that be mic'd? Why would you add sound effects for that? In whose fucking universe does that make sense? That particular sound at this moment. Yeah, a lot of fun stuff going on there, too. Uh, one more. One more. Uh Best worst looking actors. Because here's oh. the thing. In Christian <laughs> movies, we've found the actors are, shall we say, not the best looking bunch. No. But you get that they look like people. <laughs> Everyone here looks like a, a, some form of chocolate that was dropped on the ground. They look like an old, basically, if, I, if you told me a witch turned a baby Ruth bar into this entire cast, I'd get it. <laughs> I get it. They're look this the cast of this is the same as the Raisinette Raisins from the old Let's All Go to the Movies jingle. Oh, shit. Still gonna eat it though. <laughs> yes, we are for some fucking reason. Alright, well we've been neglecting the rampant insanity of Muslim cinema for forty nine episodes and counting, so we'll keep this break brief and when we come back we'll marvel at the no budget insanity that is Day When Sun Rises in the West. Film that shock the world. Hey, Todd, thanks for coming in. Have a seat. Thanks. Now, uh, the reason I asked you to come in today is that I just got done looking over the subtitles you did for Day When Sun Rises in the West, film that shocked the world. And, uh, gotta say, they weren't great. They they weren't great. I see. I mean, even the title there, you're missing two definite articles, the tense is wrong on shock, and that's probably the best you did on any of the subtitles. I see. Now, I, I've looked back over your resume here, and I see that you're plenty qualified to do the job, so I'm wondering why we wound up with such a syntactically dubious finished product. What? what yes. Do you do? Yep. So, so what happened? With the translating? Yes, with the translating. I, I furthered the words. You, you, you what? There were many words in the language, for then I put them in other words good. You, you, just want to make sure I heard you correctly there. You just said you put them in other words good? That I sure did, parentheses, laughing, parentheses. With all Nothing. of those words I did put. Um, okay, well, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you serious? A uh, stroke. Oh, gotcha. Just cutting into the episode for a quick announcement. If you were bummed that you didn't act fast enough to get a ticket to our live show in New York this month, we're pleased to announce that we were able to add a couple of seats to the venue. So if you're going to be in or around New York City on Friday, August 12th, and you'd like to be in the audience for our first ever live record, look for the link on the show notes for this episode and act fast. And if you're a patron, keep an eye on the Patreon feed. We're going to be having a patrons-only VIP get-together before the show, and you'll be receiving details about that shortly. And now, back to the show. And we're back for the breakdown, and I'm just going to say up front that the logo was probably at least 50% of the movie's budget. Never got that good again. Yeah, my notes say, ah, someone paid for a fancy logo on Fiverr. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Fun fact, the exact they paid the exact same person that Vultures of Horror paid for their shiny, <laughs> slow-moving logo because it is the ad on the front page of Fiverr. When you go to, like, the graphic <laughs> effects, the guy who makes your logo shiny in 3D, he's, like, the top-rated guy. So they obviously went, graphics, top-rated, chose that guy, <laughs> never thought about it again. <laughs> it was the best Five decision dollars. they made in this fucking movie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also have a note here. All great films start with someone asking you to subscribe to their YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to credits. And the credits, in a lot of ways, could have been from a normal low-budget movie or whatever if the music slash beeping sounds thing was different. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My first note is... Is that a polygraph, a seismograph, vital signs? What? We, I think the movie's having a seizure. The movie's <laughs> actually having a seizure. I think that's what's happening. My first note is, oh, this is music. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also noticed that they, they do a bunch of like flashes of war and destruction and explosions and people rioting. And it occurred to me, it's probably a lot easier to convince people living in the Middle East that they're living in the end times. Like, <laughs> it's hard in America, but it's like, I don't know, man. All this stuff really does seem to be going down. <laughs> 
I was because at first I was thinking to myself, oh, okay, this is like post apocalyptic footage, and then I'm like, oh no, this is probably just out the east window or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> This is just Libya. And uh, the music here is pretty crazy. I have a couple of notes on that. Um, first, I wrote, uh, Subway announcers just about to have a machete fight. That's what's about. They're about to break out. They're about to do the Chronomaniac segment. That's pretty much what it sounds like. Right. And uh, my other note was uh, Radiohead release party getting attacked by terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded a bit like that. Shit. At least they worked in current events. And just... <laughs> In case you needed a way to know exactly how bad this was going to be during the credits, among the background music credits is YouTube Music Library. So <laughs> I don't need to throw that out there. So the best and the finest. Yeah, exactly. So now we cut to the, the, the science room where they monitor the science. Mm hmm. And, and we learned that the earth is made for Earthquakes <laughs> and <laughs> volcanoes and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, pretty weak science going on here. It's like the Quran. Yeah, and the uh, the NASA scientists seem to be talking about the end times in front of the most green screen oh, green screen I have. And I didn't imagine that something could look less realistic than just actually sitting in front of a green piece of paper, but they did it. <laughs> they managed it. <laughs> I feel like they green screened the actors on separate green screens and then cut them all together, but like left the splicing in. It's fucking crazy. I, I think actually, I think at one point they did. I paused on an early scene in this in this portion, like where the, it shows the guy from the side, and I think that's what they did because they didn't have enough room between the camera and the green screen to show like row of guys. <laughs> I think they might have ran out of green. They had one in blue, and it kind of didn't work. So yeah, that's right. Fine. Go with it. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a bunch of earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff. Uh, so then we cut to th our four main characters hanging out on the first of many bombed walls on which they will <laughs> hang out. Yeah, just hanging out in Batman's dream, high-fiving your buddies. I get it. <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, character one is laughing about women with character two, character three, and character four. <laughs> yes, yeah. And uh, character four wants them to stop joking around and become proper Muslims, or else... You you know, consequences. Yeah. Exactly. It's so character four. It's so, <laughs> character, so four. character four. And let's talk for a second. So they're basically these characters only are defined by their different like sins. Yeah. So one of them we learn in this scene is a ladies man and he's supposed to be doing bro talk, but because of the people made this movie don't know what bro talk sounds like, he's basically like, and then she was like, I can't live without you. I will kill myself. And I was like, do it. <laughs> kill yourself. And they're all like, no, you didn't, dude. You <laughs> dig it <diggity> down. <laughs> Yeah, this movie's gonna give it to you piecemeal, but I'll let you know right away. Uh, you've got, uh, that, that's Wasim is the, is the ladies man, and then you've got, uh, uh, Amir is the guy who fights with his parents and disrespects him, that's his sin, and Fazal drinks alcohol, and then Wahid is the good Muslim who keeps telling him to fuck off, um, who I absolutely hate. Uh, my music note, by the way, for this scene is, you can give your avatar any of these different eye shapes. <laughs> yeah. Wahid is the only one who stuck out to me, and he looks like he should be explaining the wage gap is a myth while cutting off someone's clitoris. <laughs> he is Muslim fedora in yeah, my house. Yeah, uh-huh. I have him as a gay Muslim Abe Lincoln. <laughs> gay Lincoln. Yeah, there you go. So, I love to, and this is probably one of the places where they should have green screened and didn't, because at one point, uh, Wasim says, oh, it's evening, guys, I have to go, and it's like the sun is clearly directly overhead at that point, I'm like, couldn't you change the line at least? Yeah, the sun's <laughs> practically a fucking under five in this scene, and he's like, well, night time, gotta yeah, go. <laughs> And okay, so then we got to th we I, we absolutely have to mention this line that we get from uh, from Amir to Wasim. He says um, something along the lines of "Look at this guy," but this is the actual line. He says physically like the leg of an egret, nothing in the pocket but <laughs> girls around you. That's the actual oh, subtitles. I, I got it. Okay, Eli's translations for this movie. Um, you have chicken legs, right? Because mm -hmm. yep. that Google yep. Translate took whatever squiggles that was and turned it didn't turn it into chicken. They turned it into egret. Okay. So, All right. yep. yeah, and then they forgot the L, so it's egg, right? So it's <laughs> physically you have chicken legs and empty pockets, so he doesn't have any money. So you got chicken legs and no money, and yet the girls still like you. I solved the puzzle. Solve well, the puzzle. I, you know, I, I honestly, this was one of the easier lines to, for me to decipher because I just I googled leg of an egret, and this guy does kind of. 
does kind of look like the leg of an egret. I think he pretty much nailed it. He does look like a homeless egret. <laughs> Character two is hilarious. <laughs> that's, that's why they are all high fiving, I guess. And then we get the voiceover that starts and basically it says like, uh, these damn kids today and their damn music. Yeah, that's essentially, I wrote in my notes, kids these days, the Muslim edition. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wanted Paul Lynn to come out there with like a fatwa beard on. <laughs> And uh, by the way, this is—I I already started writing problems with the subtitles. I mean, they might as well be pictographs. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, the person in charge of subtitles is fluent in—I'm pretty sure none of the languages being used. Not no. Hindi, not Urdu, not English. Might as well just show the Rosetta Stone at the bottom and be like, "Figure it out. <laughs> You'll get it." Yeah. No, you won't. Um nope. So, so yeah. So the VO is telling us that the that the signs of the era of the Kiyama are getting visible now. It's the actual fucking line. Um, and, uh, basically he's saying, but the kids don't understand and don't recognize them. Now these, these signs we will learn once again is there are earthquakes and economic disparity. Yeah. And therefore the end times must be coming because unlike the other times in history, <sighs> again, Muslims always take it to 10. Christians are like, Oh, look at the signs, Obama and, Mo and the Muslims are like, look at the signs. Water. <laughs> <laughs> they always take crazy to the next level. They've always whatever the anything yeah. you can do, Muslims can do better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we get this weird vo all about it. It's basically saying like, oh, this movie is about moderate Muslims being the problem with the world. Yeah. And go. We're starting the movie now. <laughs> I'm the narrator. We made a Go. movie about this. So while the voiceover is telling us all about the end times, we get Amir going home so that he can fight with his dad. Now, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out here. I have a feeling like maybe someone has a physical appearance note on dad. <laughs> dad looks like the only Muslim leprechaun. <laughs> he is fucking, he is the, he is a bright red, he is the yeah. craziest looking human. He looks like a surprise troll doll hanging upside down in a mental hospital. <laughs> it looks kind of like a bear dressed up as a Vegas magician, too. Like an evil-themed bear cartoon Vegas magician. I don't know. So, so this bizarre-looking humanoid is telling Amir that he needs to get a job so that he'll be... S so that he'll be safe from satanic whisperings. <laughs> not not yes. because he needs money or to contribute to society. It's because otherwise Satan will whisper to him. Yeah, he, and he he turns to his dad and he goes, "Oh, you mean I follow Satan?" And I wanted Dad so badly to be like, "Hey, I ever tell you the story of Moses?" <laughs> 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 Fucking crazy. So yeah, Morgan basically Morgan Freeman dressed as Moon Knight is just following his son <laughs> around the apartment bothering him uh, -huh. uh and explains that not having a job is the reason that he doesn't have a focused mind yeah and that if he had a job he'd have a focused mind and and let me say as someone who's had a series of day jobs many of them did not focus no, my mind. it's quite the opposite yeah. and i've had plenty of day jobs too and i got lots of satanic whispering <laughs> well there you go <laughs> so Pay attention. Also, like, in the middle of this scene, mom appears like she was summoned from a lamp. That was one of the creepiest <laughs> jump scares I've ever fucking seen. Mom is in the kitchen in this hijab, and all of a sudden, she's on screen also bitching at, uh, at Amir. Yeah, I call mom in my notes, I'll settle for Jeannie. Not I dream of Jeannie, <laughs> but I'll settle for Jeannie. Shit. <laughs> and my music note here, of course, is Ode to Joy. No, really, that's the music that they're playing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Ode to Joy. In the middle of the fight with the parents. Couldn't be less appropriate. No. Oh, my exact note is, Ode to Joy is super inappropriate, but we already paid for it, so that's the music <laughs> I guess right. so. And this is where we learn that he's supposed to be a teenager and not a solid... 35 year old who's balding he looks like a middle-aged potato and he's supposed to be roaming around with his fucking parents and going like he's the same age as the fucking bearded guy yeah, yeah so this 36 year old teenager goes into his room and lays down on his fucking bed and and then his phone rings like a fucking pay phone on the wall of a 1930s <laughs> diner yeah that's right not usually what cell phones sound like i was no. waiting for to like pull start the thing before he picked it up <laughs> ring, 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 ring. hello operator connect yeah. me to muslim 
(laughs) (laughs) But he doesn't answer it, so there was no reason for it to fucking ring. So then we cut to uh, Fazal, who does answer his phone. Right. And this is okay. So already the subtitles had been pretty bizarre, but I have a feeling we've all copied this entire conversation. Yes, we have into our notes. <laughs> oh, yes. Very exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you, yeah, you have the whole thing, Heath, if you don't mind. All right. So yeah. this is the actual phone conversation that we get to hear. <laughs> yes. Um, he picks up. He says, Yes, Muna, tell me, you reached already? <laughs> Today it is dance and dance only. <laughs> <laughs> Three exclamation marks. Sunny reached or not? <laughs> I am ready. Have taken bath just now. I will be there in a flash of eyes. A flash of eyes. Oh, oh, oh that makes no sense. Well, <laughs> within no time, I will be there. Yes. Yeah. Which gave me this real moment of pause because part of what we've been doing as we've been reading the Quran on Scathing Atheist is being like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, why can't I get a good translation? Why can't I get a good translation? And this is where I had a moment where I was like, what if this is just how Muslims talk? <laughs> what if they never, what if grammar's just not a thing? <laughs> You just throw the words out there. You figure out the content. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like apparently. Yeah, so please understand, as we're trying to puzzle out what the fuck's going on, that's what we have to work with. Our starting basis is, I will be there in a flash of eyes. Within no time, I will be there. Yeah, the people who do subtitles for hentai would look at this and be like, come on, guys, some effort, some effort. <laughs> <laughs> and then we head to the, to the strobe club and... I don't believe words can begin to do this scene justice, but we'll try. Okay. We'll try. <laughs> Everything is green screen. Yes. Each of these people were set on a different green screen, yes. doing a different version of terrible dance. <laughs> to different rhythms. <laughs> to different music. Different yeah, rhythms. There's only one I... woman in the entire club. Yeah, I could watch these guys dance forever. Oh, it was amazing. Because they're basic. I can't. Oh, again, not a visual medium, but it is everything I've ever wanted. If that were a a GIF, I would just, if that were a GIF, I would just watch that over and over and over again. We could do an entire show just about me watching that GIF because it is the most beautiful thing I will ever see. Oh, it might as well be like dancing diaper man from, from local access. It's always sunny. It's crazy. I, okay. So what we've got here is we have people just overlaid two dimensionally, one on top of the other dancing. So it looks like a crowded club, but they haven't paid attention to like the people behind people being smaller than them or anything like there's just random sizes of people throughout. <laughs> they you might g- as well have people sideways like fucking clip art. Yeah, right. This movie was made in the Spider-Man movie maker. <laughs> 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 fucking insane. So all the men are dancing together very heterosexually. Um, and one of them, Fazal gets tired. It's Fazal, Sonny, and Muna. At this point, um, and they're like, oh, well, I know something that'll make sure you never get tired. Alcohol. But he doesn't want to drink. Right. He calls it Let's a have dose. a dose. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. Yeah. What? So they're going to go do acid? I'm That's what myself. This is really interesting. Me. I like maybe they'll see the Muslim apocalypse. Great. <laughs> well, I was going to say that would explain why we were seeing this club the way we were, too. And yeah. The rest of the movie. Everybody was to dosed. be fair. If I was on acid when I saw the chest lioned elephant eared monkey face <laughs> pig eyed antichrist, uh-huh. I think I'd be the coolest with it in all possible situations. <laughs> I'd just be like, I'm a pet it. Get off me, Heath. I'm a pet it. <laughs> I'm like, get, get off. You gotta go with your hand open because he's got the eyes of a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So yeah, so is the, but the religious buddy won't drink. Okay. Yes, he will. And. Uh, this is one of those great moments where we see how much the Muslims understand drinking. First of all, the guy literally holds his nose as he drinks, and before he has finished the drink, he is completely shit-faced. Yeah, he instantly turns into Dudley Moore from Arthur. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> instantly. Yeah. He's hiccup drunk instantaneously. It's ridiculous. But first of all, they order... They get they get oh, up to the right. bar. They <laughs> order three beers on the rocks. They say that <laughs> three beers on the rocks, and then they they like they're trying. The whole thing is that they're convincing this one guy who's like, "Oh, I'm Muslim. I can't have alcohol." They're convincing him that beer is not having alcohol in it or something. It's not liquor, so it's, it's not. Li- yeah, it's, they, it, it yeah. makes no sense. And he asks the bartender. He's like, "Oh, 
are those beers I ordered made of alcohol or whiskey? Exact words. <laughs> yeah. Alcohol or whiskey? <laughs> and and the bartender's answer is just smile, blank stare, which is <laughs> holds possibly the only line in the movie still. that makes sense. Yeah, sure. Right. If you told me that that bartender was on a green screen, like in Harambe's cage, his performance would have made sense. <laughs> but other than that, it, it, he literally, he, the characters talk to him, the camera cuts to him, and he's just like, I was, am, is it done? Uh, and mine it's a blank stare budget. blank stare <laughs> yeah so so anyway so the one muslim guy who didn't want to drink gets drunk and and he's bad and evil and then we cut to this 28 minute scene oh of these guys leaving the bar this must be 12 and a half percent of the movie is oh, these yeah. three drunk guys leaving the bar and so basically <laughs> the bit is this Wait, 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 wait. How you doing? <laughs> I'll be fine. Okay. How funny wait, is that wait, once? wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Eight fucking times yes. in a row. Oh, my God. It is unbearable. Well, and even once all of that's over and they finally, the one guy drives off, the Fazal drives off and the other two guys, then they they they, they carry the scene on with the uh, remaining two guys talking about what just happened as they walk off for another couple of minutes. At, oh. Yeah. As they walk off past, I guess, an extremely loud dog kennel <laughs> where they were keeping all the audio equipment for this shot. I have yes. no idea. Maybe that was added in post. <laughs> So then we cut to the next day, I guess, and, and two of the buddies are, are hanging out on some, a pile of rocks, which is where these guys tend to meet at, at various piles of rocks. <laughs> yep. Um, and this is Fazal and Amir, and apparently Fazal is all hung over from last night. Right. And they're basically having the, you know how Mormons argue about like whether or not you're allowed to have root beer? They're doing that among Muslims because I, I googled it and I guess this is a thing like some Muslims think beer's okay because it's not mm -hmm. hard liquor and some don't so they're basically they're hashing that out and uh, Muslim right. fedora is very upset with them yeah very the, the, upset the, this is the butt sex doesn't count of Islam yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Wahid, the the fedora guy here is yeah he's he's super irate. He's the hardcore Muslim that's going to heaven in this movie. He's the like worst human um, that we have to deal with. And he actually says this again. These are the exact title uh, subtitles. Every good human agrees. Drinking is the worst. It's true. Every good human, <laughs> all the good on human. the planet. <laughs> he also he points out that like God hates beer. Massacres, eh, but yeah, beer, he's like very, very firmly against it. <laughs> and uh, so, and like Fazal, of course, he's all hung over and he's like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be drinking because I'm feeling like shit now. So he's, he, he agrees to like hear Wahid out. And during this little tirade, he wants him to commit to never even look at alcohol. That's yeah. very literally what he's asking him to do. To which Fazal, to his credit, says, fuck off, dude. Yeah, and what's crazy is one of the guys in the scene actually goes, well, yeah, haven't Muslims changed their mind about a bunch of rules? Like, shouldn't we change our mind? And he's just, he literally doesn't even acknowledge the point. He just right. keeps talking. He just says, alcohol, his answer is, alcohol is the mother of all evils. Yeah, that is his answer exactly to, haven't works. we changed our mind before? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I guess they get as sick a Wahid as I am and all pick him up and carry him to the car. <laughs> right, but it's supposed to be like comedy hijinks. I, cause they're, they're having this very super serious conversation, apparently, where Wahid is telling them, you know, the, like he found out they're cutting in an after school special. And then it instantly transfers to like, something tells me I'm into something <laughs> good. And they carry him. He's like, no, seriously, guys. But if they threw him You're into a pool of hell. other rocks, it would have made sense, but they don't. So it's crazy. <laughs> So and and in continuing with that bizarre comedy theme, we are now going to arrive at one of those fancy cartoon sound effects restaurants they have in the Middle East for one of the most bizarre fucking scenes I have ever experienced in my life. I have no idea what happened in this scene. <laughs> None. I watched it three times and then I made a decision. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I wrote notes and I don't know what happened and I watched it three times. I forgive myself and I moved on. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself for watching this scene. So they're all ordering some Tim Tim chicken. They have to fuck with the 
poor waiter a little bit, but they're getting some Tim Tim chicken, which, by the way, looks delicious. I've never had Tim Tim chicken, but that looked pretty ga- goddamn good. But for whatever reason, every third line in this scene will be followed by a random Acme sound effect. Boing. <laughs> yeah, just out of nowhere. I mean, here's the thing. Guys, I think we've been really messing this up. We've been watching these movies, taking extensive notes, writing sketches for the interstitials, engaging with fans, creating content. Did you know all we needed was wacky sound effects? (laughs) Take us up into the next level. (laughs) Oh, my God. It sounded like a morning show having an orgasm. It was was so fucking weird. And they're just randomly inserted. Like, somebody will just say a line, and there will suddenly be a... Is that a guitar string just broke right next to us for no reason? <laughs> yep. 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 That's what happened in the movie. Yeah. So basically, the waiter comes over and says, what do you want? They say, surprise us. And he says, do you want some alligator? <laughs> and they say, alligator? No. More like put some chicken in it. <laughs> and then then he's like okay i'll get you some chicken and they're like all right make it with the fastness time of the hurry <laughs> Zeke Heil, Zeke Heil. and then it's over and then he walks away and then one of them is looking at porn at the I, table what yes okay so yeah one of the characters is looking at something or something and wahid says stop looking at all those filthy images we're like what is he supposed to be looking at at least let us see that we've earned it well and yeah. how does he know there's obscene pictures over there if he's a good muslim how would he <laughs> yeah. even really protect your eyes you protect your eyes yeah right how do you know i have porn yeah exactly <laughs> if you saw me at the gay club last night we're both indicted <laughs> And then they are instantly brought their food. They ordered three seconds ago, and the guy just walks over, and he's like, yep, here's your food. Yeah, here's your Tim Tim chicken. Might be a little underdone, guys. Might be a little... (laughs) Anyway, so... And then we watch them eat in fast motion to cartoon sound effects. Oh, maybe they cooked it in fast forward, too. Oh, that's That's probably how it happened. Oh, okay. (laughs) It just follows that chicken around, the fast forward does. Yeah, so we get some hilarious stuff about how one of them eats chicken really fast. Uh, yeah, yeah, he gets congratulated for finishing in five minutes. And then the next line is, but eight equals eight persons. Eight A-T-E equals the number eight persons. What what the? You can't have homophone jokes in the subtitles in a different (laughs) language. (laughs) That would make no sense. Also, that's not a joke. No, no. It makes no sense. Exactly. And this is where we get the blind guy, right? So Wasim needs to leave for whatever reason. Um, and as he's leaving, he runs into this blind guy where, first of all, he is the most ridiculous douchebag of an asshole to this blind guy that you can possibly imagine. And then secondly, the blind guy is so irritating that he ultimately deserves it and I don't feel bad anymore. Well, he bumps into him, right? This guy is classic. He's so clearly blind. He's wearing the dark glasses. He's got the stick. He's practically got a sign that says, like, I'm blind on mm-hmm. his chest. But he bumps into him and he's like, hey, man, why are you wearing those dumb glasses? You're going to bump into people. And he's like, oh, I'm very clearly blind. And the guy's <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> blind, right. Yeah, I guess. And then the blind guy replies to that by saying, that's the only thing wrong with my body. Yeah. <laughs> What? Clearly trying to pick Wasim up at this point, I would think. He just was like, oh, uh, sorry to bump into you. You've got to watch where you're going. Oh, I'm blind. My dick works. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just really saying. well. Just saying. <laughs> well, and then, and then Wasim's bizarre reaction to this is, what are you complaining about being blind for? Some people don't even have limbs to put their bootstraps on. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you talking about man he's like an unimaginable asshole to this blind guy and then he goes like well if you were blind what would you see or what would you look at or whatever it's like tits dude i would look (laughs) at tits yeah and the blind guy's answer is everything that god created so the answer is the things you can see with your eyes and that's supposed to be this very poetic (laughs) moving moment where he's like oh i would look at the sky and those naturally occurring boats that god created (laughs) those are dollar on the dollar but instead he's what he is saying is i would look at things yeah right right yeah exactly and i would probably dig it yeah at which point, the other character reacts like he's just run into Morgan Friedman for the first time inside Shawshank. Like, it's this great <laughs> nugget of wisdom. So much so that it causes him to have a flashback to when he was sitting at the table doing nothing. 
<laughs> yeah, well, he was supposed to be looking at the porn or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, by the way, the blind guy actually says he's glad that God blinded him because he can see no evil. So right. he's like yeah. safer uh-huh. somehow. Only problem is, though, now you can hear evil super well because you're all honed. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's as safe as he thinks. All right. All right. Yeah. You might hear this show, for example. So. All right. So and then. Yeah. And then he leaves after running into the blind guy after having this big moment or whatever. And it comes back to the other three friends talking about whether or not Wahid is going to go to the to the birthday party to Wasim's birthday party or whatever. And they're like, yeah. oh, Wahid never goes to birthday parties because he's too Muslim or whatever. Right. To what? To which Wahid is like, no, my friend will be one year closer to dead. Of course I'll go. <laughs> right. What? Yeah. And then Fred Flintstone slips on a banana peel right next to them. <laughs> <laughs> Inevitably, irrevocably. His answer is basically, we're all going to die, so I'll come to your birthday. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that you put it like that, party on. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah. So now, okay. And then we, we cut to dad. And this scene will eventually be given meaning. But not yet. So what we're going to see is we're going to see the dad with the red beard, the leprechaun dad, out shopping. And he pulls open the thing and he sees two women just, you know, standing there looking at cards. And he's clearly either furious or masturbating under his clothes (laughs) at this. And the music note here is old guy's going to (laughs) shoplift. It sounds like a serial killer playing a piano for his victim right yeah. before he kills him or something like that. <laughs> and then, really weird. And then the scene ends. That's all we get. Like I said, eventually this comes back, but it, I'm like, is dad stalking these Something chicks? evil was supposed to be happening, but no, they're at a hallmark yeah. and looking yeah. at cards. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that was forbidden, but he's going to have to honor kill the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to learn later, yeah. And now we get, uh, was it Wasim coming home? Yeah, it's character one in case you're oh, lost. Oh, yes, character okay. One. Yeah, home. so character one comes home to where his dad is sweat shopping. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's part of a mom and pop sweat shop. Oh, yep. <laughs> okay. It appears. He needs a hundred bucks. Uh-huh, yeah, exactly, for a book for college. Right. And his dad's answer is, no, get a job. Well, his, dad is, his dad's answer is, bitch at him for a half an hour and then give him the hundred bucks. But yeah, and that's that's how my dad worked, too. I, yeah, I feel like this movie is about what the guys at my deli are shouting at each other. I'm always like, oh, how's that sandwich coming, guys? You sure seem upset at each other all the time. Crazy. No, beer is not liquor, though, That's in case that helps. Uh, and then dad asks him, so he finally gives him the money, he bitches at him, then he finally gives him the money, he goes, have you prayed today? And his response is, yeah, I'm regular. <laughs> I expected him to pull out Muslim Musil and be like, I'm regular <laughs> thanks to Muslim Musil. Yeah. Dissolve instantly in water. Prayed for a dry shit, it worked. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, this is, by the way, where they finally clue us in that this character's name has been Wasim this this whole time. I think that was the last of them, you know? So as we're digging through, this was a big moment. Um, So then, okay, so now we cut back to that girl that Dad was stalking. This is R- Rabia. And uh, and we see that she has been riding around without her face veil because she's sneakily putting it on as she gets home. Right. So that she can get bitched at by Dad for not wearing her hijab. And... Was this was like a scene from a horror movie for me, but I feel like it wasn't supposed to be for anybody <laughs> right, else. Right. <laughs> like this was supposed to for most people this was like after school special, Corey comes home from Topanga's late. But for me I was like, <laughs> you know, this usually doesn't end super well for Robbie. I am nervous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause he answers he he sits her down and he goes, Look, since your childhood, I have been not only your father, but your friend. Mm-hmm. And I was like and your lover? <laughs> yeah, Robbie was also, pretty cute. Huh? In the movie, a mm. weird thumping noise when he starts talking to her. I, Did you guys yes. notice? Uh, this? Yeah, like every time Dad makes a point, somebody's just dribbling a basketball one single time, really loudly, <laughs> yes. right next to them. What? With Fred Flintstone. Yeah. yeah, as he explains to her that her hijab is like an oyster shell that protects the pearl inside. And then he references a chapter we read. So I wrote in my notes, ah, I get that. He read that chapter. Yeah. <laughs> and also, not how that works. Uh, the shell protects the oyster, pretty sure. Yeah. That's how that works. Okay. Not a big deal. <laughs> That's what it's there for, yes. Um, yeah, and so he's like, but he's bitching at her for not wearing her hijab and, like, inviting all that molestation that comes with people seeing your 
knows. Right. <laughs> and keep in mind, when we saw her now, like, uh, it's important to point out that she was actually keeping her head covered and everything. It was just her face. It was just not wearing the face veil that he was so furious about. Yeah. Right. That we're having this after school special talking to him. Yeah. Right. And he actually tells her to read Surah 4 in the Quran, the women, which we know about now. And mm-hmm. th- that doesn't tell you about wearing hijabs anywhere. If no. I remember correctly. It does tell you that dudes are allowed to fuck slaves and orphans <laughs> in addition to their multiple wives and how you can put your wife in a cage under house arrest if you get four men to <laughs> claim she's cheating on you. But no, nothing about the uh, face veil. No, that definitely seems like a threat. Like he's saying, just why don't you read chapter four about how I can beat the fuck out of you and lock you in your room? <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah. Uh. This is like if there had been an episode of Different Strokes where he was like, here, read the lovely bones and then get back to me. <laughs> 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 also, and this wasn't apparently her only sin because he goes, I noticed that you were also looking at greeting cards. If you're buying one for a female friend, that's okay. But otherwise... You're yeah. going to burn in hell and I'm going to throw acid at you. Yeah, he said, you do, if you were buying that for a, if you were buying a greeting card for a man, you do great dishonor to this family. Yes. Right. Yeah. You can only go to Halal Mark and for ladies. <laughs> and, and like, what does he think is happening? Like, she's giving him to dudes like, get well soon and I want you to shove bacon inside me. Hallmark her on. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Yeah, and of course, twice in in a row, her her subtitle is "Yes, Dady D A D Y," drove me fucking nuts. So then he, he and then at the very end, before she leaves, he very clearly threatens to beat the fuck out of her because he says, "If this happens again, I will come to you not as a friend but as a father." And I'm like, "Okay, what the hell else could that possibly be mean?" Right. I was expecting the next kid to walk in and for him to yell at the other kid for not killing Jews. He's like, "All right, I want you to leave." <laughs> Pretty much all the other sorors. Sorors one through three, and then you hang out with Moishi. Let me see your sword. That looks clean. That looks very clean. (laughs) We're gonna have to talk about this. And as if we hadn't really emphasized this point enough, the voiceover comes back on at this point to say, you know, basically just, yeah, poor dad. He sure seems to be having a rough go of it, doesn't he? Yeah, that's it. The voiceover just comes on and says, yeah, it's tough to raise kids these days, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then we get the next fucking scene, which is the friends meeting on different rubble elsewhere. <laughs> right. yeah. Just time to hang out in the fucking Sahara again. Yeah. Hey, the guys, you want to sit on some rubble again today? Found some awesome rubble out past the mall. Perfect. And this is where Wahid has his sarcastic rant because they're like, man, parents are the worst, aren't they? And Wahid's like, oh, yeah. Why don't we just kick our parents out? Why don't we kill them? Why don't we cut their heads off and make? And I was like, I'm not sure if this is serious or not. But then he got it. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, OK, I get it. I get it. He's doing a sarcasm thing because you never know with Muslim movies. I mean, the second half of this could have been them just murdering their parents. And it's a surah we haven't gotten to yet. <laughs> And I want to point out what a dick Wahid is being here, too, because this is Amir that he's bitching. It's it's Amir's birthday. He shows up a little late to all the buddies meeting on the rubble. He's late to the rubble. So and and then when they ask him why, he says, like, uh, well, my parents were giving me a bunch of shit. Oh, they drive me nuts. And then why he jumps into his. Yeah. Why don't you just rape him in the fucking neck hole then? Right. <laughs> and, and small thing when Amir walks up. The noises he's making are crazy. Like, is he wearing stilettos? I'm thinking, like, <laughs> tap shoes. What's going on? Why would you add audio for footsteps if that's not really there? You're outdoors on like sand. I have a, fe- I have a feeling though that at this point, the, the the producers were just like, you know what? It's not a Boeing. It's if you're, you're doing great, man. You're doing good. That works. Those, no, those are footsteps, and he's walking. Yes, yes, that's Fuck exactly. You. <laughs> <laughs> You having a good vacation, Brian? Fuck you. <laughs> um, this is also just a tiny moment, but he says, oh, like when your mother risked her life in giving birth to you. And I was like, yeah, in some parts of the world, that's not as big a risk. You, know <laughs> yeah, oh, you also don't have to worry about dad stabbing the obstetrician for seeing a coup. So, <laughs> you know, tit for tat. And we learn here that disrespecting your parents is a major sign of the Quranomaniac. <laughs> of the Queen and the, the quiche. Yeah. The queen, the key, the and straight guy. <laughs> the apocalypse. The end times. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then we get another, uh, another fun driving montage. 
Yeah, music note here, Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> <laughs> I had it as Bossa Nova Nintendo porn. Yep. <laughs> so like Donkey Kong fucking Diddy, basically. Yeah, well, yep. there you go. <laughs> Yeah, and this is obscenely long. And the only thing that we actually learn is that while they're like driving around, hanging out in town or whatever, they have to periodically stop so Wahid can go in to pray at pray times. Yeah, and that was it. That's that was that was everything. We spent five fucking <laughs> minutes on this scene. They hung out the fucking car. They high fived an awful lot, and then everybody gets dropped off, and, yeah. and, and we end up in a parking lot where they're parking. Well, question, guys, were you waiting for some sweet, sweet motherfucking special effects in this movie? <laughs> I, I was. I was. I w- at this, this scene, point, I was ready. We get it. <laughs> okay. We get it. I want to point this out. The, okay, so we get a big earthquake at, at this point, and and one of the characters is in a in a um a parking garage when it happens, and there's like debris falling around him, CGI debris. I checked. This is the exact same graphic that they used at the end of the of the first Vultures of Horror, where he burns the house down <laughs> yeah. and the and the shit keeps falling off the house. Identical. And yeah, it's the exact same yeah. graphic it as is. Vultures of Horror. <laughs> We're gonna know the After Effects numbers for this shit before long. Except this time oh, they see. added a cartoon welder just off screen attacking him. So. Yeah, well that's. <laughs> He does get attacked by some wild sparks. I assumed that was a Pokemon that somehow. Oh, that might universe. have you. That makes more sense now that you mentioned. <laughs> they it. are satanic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, this is also where I, we haven't mentioned this yet, which is crazy. But I always like it when the movie I'm watching has the stamp of the production in the <laughs> shot, right across the character's <laughs> face. That's where I noticed it for the first time that they just have motive techno or whatever this people who made this movie moral, is. moral vision. vision and it's not going to move for the whole movie yeah, it's, it's going to be right there in the middle right there right yeah there I'm, the I'm surprised it's screen. not still burned into your retina that you could get it wrong <laughs> I, I still see that everywhere i look yeah and it's on there twice it's in the upper right hand corner and in the middle of the goddamn <sighs> screen this watermark and sometimes there's something at the bottom that goes over half the subtitle <laughs> yes. that i already can't read and now i can't read it's ridiculous yeah no yeah. the whole thing was like filled up like the msnbc you know like the yeah. stock photo or whatever and shit like that you got 16 screens of shit going on that you're trying to work yeah, your way literally around just a green strip on the bottom just the green screen they just green screen the bottom <laughs> thanks That's what yes. they thought that meant it's like Getty Images is trying to keep you to, from stealing their picture of a businessman, except they're doing it with their whole <laughs> shitty movie. And yeah, right. Who did they think was going to steal this foot? I don't know. It's it's <laughs> mystifying to me. Yeah. Right. Just like a giant puddle of water. That's the watermark. You just yeah. can't see anything. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. So they have a big earthquake. And we cut to several of the different characters getting freaked out by the big earthquake or whatever. And then we cut to the next morning where Captain Redbeard is learning all about it on the news the next day. And this news footage sequence is amazing. (laughs) First thing I got to point out, the guy who's doing the news is thinner than the tie he's wearing. He really (laughs) is. He's a small gentleman. And he says, several people were affected by the earthquake last night. Several. Several. Um, (laughs) Such earthquake has occurred. For the first time, after a long time, yes, is the next says. thing he says, exact words, and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> he may have had it. I just thought it was nice that these people watch the same TV channel as they watched in Leap 1 and 2. You yeah, know what I'm right. saying? It's, it's all one universe. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And another line, line he has in this newscast is, according to sources, the earthquake has caused damage and loss of property. In some non-specific amount, but it totally sucked. No. It was really bad. Again, several people <laughs> several affected people because of the multiple affected. cities that got destroyed. <laughs> and, then, and then he goes, and before we continue with this news report, first, some more news <laughs> of this <laughs> report. Am I done yet? Am I done? You said I could have some of that le- leftover chicken Tim Tim. <laughs> The sound effects chicken. Everybody really said it was good. And everything just Eli just said was like one word in the subtitles because they're they're using (laughs) way too many syllables at this point to match the subtitles. It's impossible that I'm getting (laughs) enough information to to hear what they're actually saying. Yeah, it's like the uh, lost in translation translation. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So then we cut to the next day and now the pals are chilling for the first time. They're on a non destroyed wall that they're hanging out on for which they needed to green screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find a fucking non destroyed wall. What are they fancy prince princess here? It's not <laughs> That's day after because tomorrow. Americans are thorough. 
Yeah. Thorough. <laughs> and, and again, they're trying to do bro talk, but it's every time they do bro talk, they're always talking about something horrible. Like I expected them to be describing the Nuremberg trials in the next one because he's like, Oh, my neighbor was afraid all night long. He was so terrified. He cried out for God. And they're all just like, ah, that's (laughs) amazing. High High five. five. (laughs) (laughs) All these characters do is laugh, high five, and sit around rubble. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty much it. My music note for this one, by the way, is if we all work together, we can clean it up in no time. (laughs) So, yeah, they're all laughing about how scared they were and weren't of the earthquake. And that's when Wahid has to go off on his... His little rant about, he says about how there's more earthquakes. He says, the, in the last three years, earthquakes have increased 75 times. Yeah. 7,500% earthquakes. Well, yeah, this. either, either what? no, or you just mean the line went up 75 times and only down 74. I, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that even means, but I'm pretty sure you're wrong. <laughs> right. And, and he basically says, Earthquakes are because of all of the evil in the world. Yes, yes, and and everybody just kind of nods along. Mm, yeah, that's that's yeah, true. No, I mean, that's fair. We, we are destroying it. mountains in the names of technology. That's right. something well, we yeah, do. Well, yeah, he actually brings that up too. He says, "Well, according to the Quran, uh, uh, Allah put the mountains there to keep back the earthquakes, and we're taking away the mountains in the name of technology." So, yeah, they're they're sticking with that shit. Yeah. Uh, he also points out that according to science, the planets are losing their balance. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> I don't know what that. What? I know. I know little enough about science that I should know what that means, and even I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, science agrees about the doomsday thing. I got an email just yesterday from scientist at science dot com. <laughs> said that all the things come to an end. Um. Including the days. So that's, well, that's what's happening. Well, that's okay. That's what he says. That's basically where he's going with this. He's like, you know, even every Muslim and even some non Muslims believe in Muslim end times theology. Nope. Only the Muslims and not all of them. But so no, no, no. But then he goes on about this whole rant about how the end times is going to come. And he's like, and even science agrees that all things will come to an end. So, like, oh, yeah. Science agrees that eventually the earth will no longer exist. Nothing about the earthquakes coming from the mountain mining and shit none of that shit all science agrees with is that yes eventually there won't be an earth did you miss the part of cosmos where sagan explains that the sun will rise in the opposite direction without the planet stopping and spinning in the opposite direction (laughs) i must have missed it must have been in the new one that decratized yeah you know it was it was he spent an awful lot of time on the ostrich legged lion breasted tiger colored i want to talk about some of the signs of the apocalypse oh by oh by all means yes he lists them very specifically yeah so we've got a disobedience of parents alcoholism Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. adultery yep condoms and hoary clothing yep yeah (laughs) women will wear tight clothes and not cover their heads um (laughs) the dead will not know for what crime he is killed and the killer will not know why he is killing. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that one for a second. Murder victims, d- dead people, the victims aren't going to understand as dead people what they got killed for. <laughs> That's a sign. <laughs> wow. It just started happening over these last several years. At this point years. in my notes, I wrote, people will breathe in and out. <laughs> 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 right, uh, right. Yeah, no, they'll they'll come and they'll go. Um it's all one universe. There will be less men than women. Yep. Mhm. That's like uh, a reason to go to a college. What are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How's that a bad sign? Uh the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. Yeah, there will be yep. That, uh, um, indecent music? Yeah. <laughs> That's a big one. Uh, also, uh, people won't just give you money for free. There's going to be something called interest rates, and that's uh-huh. going to be a big problem. Fucking yeah. crazy. Also, monsters. There will be a yeah. lot of monsters. And by the way, we're getting all of this in a montage, right? So we, we, we Wahid at first is, is telling everybody at the non-rubble wall um, what's going on. But then we cut to this montage as we're carrying it out of just him talking to a bunch of old clerics and nodding along solemnly as they explain this crazy shit about how the sun will. This is a literal fucking thing. The guy says the sun will get closer and closer to the earth until it boils men's brains yeah 
Like that's going to like that would be the first thing that would go if the sun got too close to the earth. Your brain would boil. Yeah. Well, you know, you'd be fine otherwise. <laughs> yes. The brain's yeah. really the most sensitive organ in the body. Right. And if there's any problem, Superman can just reverse the spin again oh, and say, <laughs> go back in time and you'll be fine. You fix your brain. Boil this problem. fucking religion has as much scientific accuracy as the Richard Donner Superman from 1978. <laughs> yeah. And the cleric <laughs> also explains that there will be women's dresses that are like they're wearing nothing at all. Yeah. And I was into that. I was okay with that. But then I realized that he just meant dresses that aren't bags <laughs> well right right yeah because then he, he clarifies that by that he means that you'll be able to tell there are breasts and where they are i was just yeah. picturing the hijab by Spanx, and it, <laughs> it looks great. also the the distance between the signs of the end time and the end time will be a real shocker yeah huh? ah, ah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is between it is the second. distance of two fingers yeah which, the, <laughs> what well three Three. Well, three <laughs> I don't know. That's a terrible metaphor. And everyone <laughs> nods along like that makes sense. But does he mean they'll be right next to each other? Or you can put your fingers out or it could be two different people's fingers. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's like the beginning of Willow. I, I don't get it. <laughs> nonsense. Just total nonsense. Also, a day will pass as a month of the year. What? What does that and, mean? And, and hours of, well, days of, uh, hour, I, I, no fucking clue. And that's when I started thinking, like, this is why the goddamn translation is so bizarre. It's because at certain points the guy was like, why am I even fucking trying? There is no way any of this will ever make fucking sense. I'm just Google translating the whole fucking thing and putting extra periods in there. Right. <laughs> fucking bizarre. So finally, I guess the buddies have had enough of this bullshit too so we get paroled from this montage while his friends tell him to fuck off they're like yeah man you know it was Amir's birthday and we were like all gonna hang out now you scared the fuck out of us with the earthquake shit so that right. sucks and one of them is wearing a monster energy hat in this scene I just wanted to point that out <laughs> oh I did not notice I can't believe I missed that <laughs> it's pretty great it's pretty great <laughs> So now that we've loaded up on a sufficient reserve of Wahid agreeing ominously, I suppose we can pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Fazal bring drinking with his friends more? <laughs> Will Amir, his mother and dad, continue to not agree often? Will Wasim dance with dancing all for the nights? Find out how these questions are answered with answers and more when we are come back with extra more of Day <laughs> When Sun Rises in the West, film that shock the world. In a flash of eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a flash of eyes. <laughs> Eli, uh, what are you doing, dude? I'm, pa I'm packing. Why are you packing? What can I say? Movie convinced me, man. Rich getting richer, poor staying poor. People oh, are super busy. Uh, I only have one chance. And that is? I gotta go to the North Pole. Okay, I don't even want to ask, but I'm going to. Why do you have to go to the North Pole? Okay, so the way I figure it, sun can't rise in the west if I'm always on the north, right? So, boom. Take that, Muslim god. No, dude, that's, that's not, that's not how earth works. In order for the sun to rise in the west, the earth would have to like reverse its spin, and when that happened, everything on it would die regardless of... So, you're saying I need to like spin backwards? No, that okay. is not what, <laughs> don't do that, dude. There's, that's not helping. Getting dizzy. Take that Muslim god. <laughs> I love how much visual humor you bring to this show. Right? <laughs> and we're back for more of this abject nonsense. And I want to say, as boring as this motherfucker has been up to this point, I promise it was worth it to make it to Act 3. It's going to be straight insanity from here on out. And we learn that with the very first line. So this next scene takes place in a diner, and again, we're listening to the news. This is the actual subtitle for the news. I'm <laughs> complete with the misspellings and double periods. Breaking news. A giant person claims to possess power to grant life and death. So <laughs> Tony Robbins? I was Tony. thinking Ultraman. I was I was guessing Ultraman, but Oh, uh, okay. All right. But yes, according to the news, a giant person is claiming to have the power to grant life and death, but Muslims are claiming that he is a mere sorcerer and only God has those powers. Right. And 
he, these characters could not be more nonplussed <laughs> and bored by a giant sorcerer who claims to have life and death powers. They're just like, no, man, don't. I'm not going to stop eating because, you know, it's just going to be another one of those magicians. This is Chris Angel season 17, and I'm not, you know, I'm not calling for that again. Fox News Al Jazeera says a lot of things. It's fine. So, so- <laughs> Well, also, but now the one guy who is concerned is concerned for the most random, stupid reason, right? Not because he's a giant sorcerer wielding magical powers, but he goes, he turns to Wahid and he goes, I don't know, man, people are calling him with different names. That's uh pretty creepy. Right. And so Wahid leaves his bag and he's like, I have to go home to pray. I have to go home to pray. At which point he stumbles out into the street and gets hit by a car. It's amazing. <laughs> My notes here is today is a good day. <laughs> so, so the graphic when he gets hit by the car, he just moves sideways with the car. It's yep. the car just comes into the screen. He doesn't move or he doesn't change at all. He just moves sideways along with it for a little bit. About six inches recessed off the car. It's, fine. <laughs> it's so good. I watched that over and over again. You know, I, and I think maybe the audience will relate to this more than Heath or Eli will. But you know how sometimes you're jacking off to a porn and it's just, you can tell it's about to get too fucking weird, but you're almost there. So you just keep going back. I do not know what that's, that's like. I didn't figure you would. But. I very much. When you get surprise poop and you're just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was having fun, but I don't want to. Yeah, exactly. I just so play you- through. <laughs> <laughs> I just play through. Anyway, that was me watching this scene. It was quite amazing. I had my dick in my hand and everything. And also, not only was the graphic so fucking good, but through uh, throughout this movie, I kept thinking to myself, oh, God, I hope Wahid gets hit by a car. Oh, God, I hope. And then he does. <laughs> they give it to us. It pays off. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is where Allah, besides hitting him with a car because he prayed for it, I guess, he also puts a uh, bullhorn filter on all his friends' voices. <laughs> what so the hell was going on? Sounds there? like a subway announcer from the beginning. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. When you get angry enough, you clip constantly. So, so they put him on a rickshaw to the hospital. They put him on like a public bus version of a rickshaw. It's like a long one from like a Miyazaki film, and they're just like, "Yeah, it's probably the best way to get our dying friend to the hospital." He's yeah. like taking an Uber pool to the hospital. <laughs> No, I don't want to pay full price. No, you just you wait on another guy. <laughs> and uh yeah, by the way, another small thing here. The actor who played Amir got visibly excited about riding in the rickshaw for this scene. <laughs> so he's got a giant smile on his face as they ride away to the hospital with his friend's corpse lying in his arms. And he's like, Wee rickshaw <laughs> Forgot. And uh at this point the music kicks in and it sounds like Jaws is about to show up at the rave. Yes. Yeah. So that was fun. <laughs> So, so Wasim and Amir are in the rickshaw with, uh, with, with Wahim and, uh, uh, Wahid rather, and they call Fazal to tell him, you know, hey, come to the hospital, he's dying, but Fazal is convinced it's just one of Eli's prank wars again, so they have to tell him like 11 times, no, 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 we're serious, he got hit by a car. (laughs) Over right. and over again. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm used to this scene amongst a group of friends, but it just, it's like six minutes long, and I wrote in my notes, it's a good thing they're having this conversation so that we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, so I love that when they cut back to them in the rickshaw, they're like, hold his eyes open so he can't die. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, music note for this scene, music of the M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. <laughs> 50% phantom, 50% signs. It was very weird. Also, why don't they show us any of those phone calls that these, these prank calls about dead friends in earlier scenes? <laughs> like, that's great character stuff that we could have had. It would have been fun. Nope. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, and then we cut to Fazal. He's coming, I guess, to his dad's work, but he's showing up late. And, and, and he's like, yeah, one of my friends got hit by a car. And they're like, yeah, fuck off, man. You're always late. There's always somebody getting hit by something, isn't it? And then there's a nonsense scene where the rich dad turns to his assistant and he's like, send the money to the poor. <clears throat> and he's like, why, sir, we can't. And he's like, I am a rich businessman and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> send the money says. to the poor. It's so weird. So apparently dad is a, the, the, the businessman. Yeah, he's a professional. Who handles business. sending money to all the poor people <laughs> in all of India via check. <laughs> so they can deposit it into the bank accounts they all have. Yeah. 
and by See, if Bernie rocks. had been elected, he was going to make post I don't want to go. I, it's fine. It's fine. No TTP. No TTP. Sorry. I'm sorry. So, it's just getting ready. Yeah, now, but one thing that we have to know about this is it's not just that he's sending the money to the poor because he's a good person. He wants to make sure that the press sees how much money that they sent and how generous they are. So we have to establish that his dad is generous, but for the wrong reason, and therefore he burns in hell despite the fact that he, like, dedicated his life to helping poor people right and this is where i was confused because no one gets raptured before the muslim apocalypse so but they're apparently not going to be there to like suffer and be upset by it so are we gonna are we supposed to assume that like god will kill all good muslims in freak accidents <laughs> before the apocalypse like so, all yeah. just... that's what i'm assuming now oh where's that final destination movie final destination 12 <laughs> all the muslims <laughs> Trump would support it. Yeah, no, I was going to say, that would sell in America. That might knock uh, God's Not Dead off of that favorite Trump voter list. So, yeah. <laughs> so then we get Fazal heading. He, he's he's driving away from his dad's office or whatever, and he calls his friends, and they're like, no, don't meet us at the hospital. Meet us at a rooftop somewhere. I, religious right. movies spend a lot of time on rooftops, so they can tell him that Wahid is dead. Well, you can find the sniper rifle at that spot. Oh, the board, so that's important. See. The terrace. Body armor. <laughs> there might be a body armor in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, they basically say, yeah, our friend's dead. Do you want to go to his wake funeral? We're all wearing our nicest Ed Hardy t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and then we see some stock footage of Seattle. Wait, that was weird. <laughs> Yeah. Do you have yeah. a Red Bull hat? Could you change? The, the monster <laughs> energy is inappropriate. Yeah. So they say, yes, let's go to his house. Did they brought the body? Um, and then they leave this scene and we cut immediately to a few years later. For There's no, no reason. reason. No. None. No, they no had reason. the few years later, and they didn't even have the indefinite article there. They just had a few years well, later written on a title card and wanted to use it. Why say few? You can say three if it's yeah. three. Just, <laughs> just, just you decide. You're writing this. Are you hedging your bets in your own fictional <laughs> story? Exactly, because the first line here is, if you look at the last three to four years, yeah, right. again, just pick a number and go with it. Say several or say few. But no, just say three or four. It's your movie. It's your movie. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. So apparently three or four years later, Fazal is watching natural disaster stuff on his computer. And I guess we're supposed to see that the world's really turning to shit. And that's what he's looking at, all the earthquakes and whatever. But during their scene of natural disasters, they show the northern lights. Yes. <laughs> and it, with the caption, northern lights, solar storm, Finland. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could see, like, I guess there could be a really damaging solar storm that would cause a lot of, uh, a, a lot of auroras and everything, but like, wh why not say that you're seeing those from, like, you know, India or something like that? Like, it's a really bad fucking, anyway, yeah, that's, it's I very guess that's clear fairly the people minor. who made this movie saw the northern lights and were like, look at that shit. Tell me that's not the sign of the apocalypse. Am I right? <laughs> huh? I guess so. And he, he's looking up all this stuff on the computer, and we actually get to see his screen for a second. And it's very clearly just a Geist visualization with natural disaster words just at the bottom. Uh, in, right. Again, yes. like a word file that they pulled up a little bit. Yeah. It's just like, just look at the increase in earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. I'm like, an increase in volcanoes? Hold on then. Yeah. <laughs> and also, if mountains stop earthquakes... I wouldn't expect more earthquakes and more volcanoes. Oh, yeah, they right. Just, yeah, good point. <laughs> vary in lockstep. That's crazy. <laughs> right. So he calls his friend and he's like, hey, you remember Wahid? He was in this movie like just three seconds ago. Just ago, yes. And he's like, yeah. And he goes, no, no, no. I was just thinking about some of the stuff he said. And then he instantly goes, no, his soul hasn't gotten into me. And I immediately Google, do Muslims think they transfer bodies when they die, but they don't. Don't worry. Just bad subtitles. <laughs> okay, good, good. I thought we were dealing with a ghost Whoopi Goldberg situation. There <laughs> oh, I see. And that would, could, have, could have made it interesting, yeah. So, okay, so now we're, we're going to get to another partying montage in the car again, but before that, we have to cut back to the science room where a skinny guy is meeting with a dude who has the bends. To tell him that something is strange, and the computer glitch in Will a Man Rob God is specific in comparison to the strange thing that they're freaking out about. Yeah, we never find out. If you're no. watching this, we never find He just goes, it's true. 
Are you sure it's true? Check the facts. I have checked the facts. It is true. Is it for sure to be true? True. True. (laughs) And that's all the specificity we're ever going to get. So then we cut to another one of those great green screen partying in the car scenes. Apparently, three or four years later, that's still what they do with their time. Yeah. My my music note here is Night at the (laughs) Roxbury. Well done, sir. I just want to point out that, okay, because like you would think that most actors have driven, but for some reason, whenever you put an actor in front of a green screen, a bad actor, especially in front of a green screen and a steering wheel, they start like acting like they're playing Rainbow Road, even though the car is going straight. (laughs) We have a, an amazing example Stop of that coming here. coming about on the tiller. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> they all drive like I do in real life. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a montage of fun stuff on the beach. The beach, again, of course, is green screened. And, uh, and then Wasim asks who's everybody's fucking and the scene is over. Yep. Yep. That's it. That's, that's what we got. We needed another fun driving montage. No, nothing gets established or changed or anything. I think it's because they shot two science scenes in a row and they were like, no, we can't have it twice in a row. That would be (laughs) silly. Because now they're going to have the exact same science scene exactly again. Where he goes, do you see? It is everywhere. Check again. What? And I wrote my notes. What? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? (laughs) Well, and eventually they show us the the screens that they're looking at. Like, we're finally going to get the big reveal, but it's just a map of the the world with red circles on it. <laughs> yeah. So we still don't know what the fuck it is. He goes up to his boss. He's like, hey, sorry to bother you. Uh, probably just hit the wrong button on our uh, the apocalypse-ometer machine. <laughs> but you see how the entire world map is covered in bright orange squigglies, like uh, cartoonish? <laughs> um, I do see that. I do. I do. But let's double check before we all die with no way of preventing anything this movie has no stakes but double check what place were they anyway is that like an apocalypse call center that they just have in muslim nations where they just monitor i i you know what that's they probably do and that's not fucking funny (laughs) (sighs) so then we we this the screen blacks out and we cut to a city where the sunset is very clearly being played in reverse now this is supposed to be the sun rising in the west but we don't know which way we're facing so they could have just filmed the sunrise, but instead they filmed the sunset and played it in reverse. <laughs> you can feel it when you're facing east. You can feel I it. Guess. And let's just I, let's take a moment to really deal with the idea of the sun rise. None of that is how the sun works. None of that is how the planet. It's like when Christians say the stars will fall out of the sky. Yeah. It makes no fucking sense and so they can't visualize it because what would have had to have happened is the earth would have had to stop spinning which would have destroyed everything everything on it yep and then span the other direction (laughs) it's not like he slept through the part (laughs) where the earth held still (laughs) well right okay so like just think about this for a second first of all the momentum that we've got going if we're going to do this in a single night now keep in mind it has to be night everywhere at this point or the sun just reverses but let's say they're just talking about the muslim world or whatever so what would have to happen is in the course of one night the earth's momentum would have to stop spinning what is it ninety thousand miles an hour or whatever and then stop cold and reverse so not only would everything be thrown at eighty thousand miles a fucking hour in the other direction but also the fucking world would no longer be oblate so uh, uh, the fucking oceans would rise on either like the south and the north pole and a giant supercontinent would rise up through the middle of the fucking earth and then sink back down as it started spinning at the same speed automatically the other way without making a single rotation yeah kind of hard to see how that works from a physics perspective (laughs) yeah it that doesn't happen and then the earthquakes that people don't sleep through Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. A couple of earthquakes was enough to freak him out. The entire world changing its continental configuration twice in a night wasn't <laughs> okay. <sighs> so, yeah. So now the sun rises in the west and also, of course, is an amorphous blob of lens flare for some fucking reason. <laughs> right. And then he calls his friend to, like, see if he was just crazy. And he says, did you see what happened? And the guy's like, what? It's It's the sun. 
How did this guy know what they're talking about? Yeah. If he didn't notice the planet started spinning the other direction and the sun. What? That's just his standard. He goes with the biggest thing he's aware oh, of. Oh, you're, or you're, can you're see talking about moon. the sun. It's normal. What? Right. And his friend's like, don't be a downer. Let's go meet in the rubbles. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, Wasim is surprisingly nonplussed by the sun rising in the west shit. And of course, according to the news, the sun rising in the west has caused much hustle in the world. Would yeah. have been plenty stupid enough if they hadn't spelled hustle H U S S L E, but it was, and they looked did. right to me. <laughs> <laughs> also, the news says that sun worship has risen. I'm sorry. Is there an index you check for that? <laughs> it's on the apocalypseometer. There's, oh, of it's course. Insane, the world it's map. very hard to do a, a Pew report from eight in the morning till ten in the morning. It's really you got to admire those people. Yeah, yeah, especially with the Earth entirely destroyed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, now the scientists also don't seem to be too surprised by this because according to the news, scientists are claiming that now onwards, sunrise will take from West. That's what the subtitle said. So <laughs> I'm giving. And then bef- he meets with his friends and his friends are all freaked out. But before he gets all worked up about this, he goes to see how his dad's business is doing. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, and Fizal's dad is just crying at his desk, totally losing his shit. Right, gnashing teeth. Yeah, gnashing of teeth, yeah, exactly. And his response to this is to steal his dad's computer and leave to go meet his friends out on the plane. (laughs) Very clearly, yeah. He's like, you know what would be great at the rubble? A laptop. So he meets his buddies at the good rubble, and they Google, like, well, first of all, we have to watch him walk up to the rubble from, like, 11 miles away for some reason. And then they Google signs of the apocalypse. Right. And then the internet, they Google signs of the apocalypse, and it's like a flash montage of like, yeah, totally the apocalypse, totally the apocalypse. Uh, and then the internet goes out, and I wrote, oh, maybe the internet is rising in the West. Have you tried facing the opposite? <laughs> Make as much fucking sense as tried unplugging the sun and then plugging it back in. Like, <laughs> yeah, now, but the important thing to note is that Wasim is being a total pussy about this end of the world stuff, and so is Amir, really, when you come right down to it. And then the nothing from Never Ending Story rolls in on the horizon. Yes. <laughs> what the fuck is going? Anyway, so so meanwhile in the science room, shit is hitting the fan. Right. We learn that the distance from the sun to the earth is decreasing. The earth is falling into the sun backwards. And, and this has never happened before. They in keep history, saying that. Is what they say. <laughs> Except for half of every year, but otherwise <laughs> the sun never gets. The Earth never gets close to the sun. Yeah, it's fine. Shut up, Heath. You know what they meant. You know what they meant. <laughs> well, but that's it. But even if you accept what they're actually meaning here, it, like as though that was in need of clarification. You remember that big counterclockwise Earth spins sun dive of seventy four? It's nothing compared to that one. <laughs> the fuck? Why would you have to say this ha- anyway? And yeah, we liked it. And all the mountain ranges apparently are crumbling, thus all the earthquakes, <laughs> which are apparently crumbling. on the computer looks like red circles all over the world. Yeah. yeah. Again, they they monitor the extent to which all the mountains on Earth are crumbly or not crumbly. Right sensors. now they're crumbly. All of them, every single one is crumbly yeah. from their sensors. What the fuck is going on? Anyway, so meanwhile, back to Amir begging forgiveness as he runs downhill with a shaky camera. Yeah, director's note. Shake the camera. Shake the camera. It's the only special effect we can afford. <laughs> Also, I love that apparently the town they're in has apocalypse sirens. They're yeah. very clearly going off now. Also, very realistic explosions to go along with it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're getting attacked by some large pixels here. It's pretty scary <laughs> stuff. Just oh. running through town repenting. I have to point this out to a great little effects moment. At one point, there's an explosion, and the camera is following Fazal through the town as everything's going to shit. And the camera's moving forward, but the debris isn't, so it's like staying in place as they go, <laughs> like it's following them. That's how so, much attention they were paying on this one. Yeah. Also, crazy moment. He gets, he's been running through this exploding town with the After Effects dinosaur chasing him or whatever the fuck's going on. And he runs to his apartment where his parents lives and he pushes the elevator button because he's a fat piece of shit. He tries to take the elevator instead of the fucking stairs. Honestly, they might as well have had a CGI bunny bounce across the screen at this point. <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and so and and then also you're running upstairs in a giant fucking earthquake world, but that's stupid. You deserve to get apocalypse, dude. <laughs> 
Anyway, so he gets to the apartment, and Dad is dead in the apartment, and he doesn't have the sense to say, well, I shouldn't be in this big, tall building, then should I, and run the fuck back out. So he promises, he turns to God now and promises never to disobey his parents again. He's just come into the apartment and found them dead. What a hollow fucking promise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fucking bullshit. And then there's a huge explosion, and we get the graphic that makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> oh, it's so good. If the rest of the screen had just been a black screen with <laughs> dripping water in the background, it would have been worth it for this fucking scene. Oh, so- so the apartment explodes, mm-hmm. right? Explodes, and he is hanging out of it on the very edge. And as he's hanging out of it, like a goddamn Monty Python cartoon, <laughs> the building next to his turns sideways it does. and explodes. Well, but it, 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 as this building falls, it stays completely together, right? The whole yeah. building like just turns 90 degrees in the screen. Also, can we discuss the logistics of how he's hanging out of this building? Uh, he's hanging from nothing. And outward. Like he's outwards. facing outward, yep. hanging on nothing. And also, did did either of you guys notice the cars below his feet? As as we're seeing the like him like looking down shit, it, you watch, were they not realistic? Oh my god! Below his feet? Watch that scene again. <laughs> They're going sideways and spinning out. It looks like a fucking <laughs> looks like a level of spy hunter or something going on below him. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so he's hanging out, screaming, clipping to God about how he will never disobey his parents or do bad deeds again. But then he realizes that oh no, it's too late because the sun has already risen from the west. He should have done this shit yesterday. And then, as if this wasn't apocalyptic enough, he's looking straight out in front and a giant (laughs) fucking 8,000 story tall tidal wave comes at him. Yes. It's crazy looking. They might as well just like walk across the screen holding Hokusai's great wave painting. (laughs) Big wave. It's hitting you. It's hitting you. Hit him. Just hit him in the face with it. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I wanted them to squirt him with a squirt gun. Just like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I would not have been surprised at all if this ended with super soaker action. So, yes, a nine million foot tall tidal wave that dwarfs the goddamn skyscrapers and whatnot around him is coming right at him. And just as it hits him, we find out it was all a dream. Hey, it's all a dream. <laughs> Christian movie bingo. Bingo. Yeah, exactly. It's a Muslim movie bingo. But yeah, exactly. He wakes up s- sitting straight up. It still bothers me even with all the fucking inaccuracies <laughs> in this movie because this was all a bad dream. How much of it was a dream? Okay, but was it all a dream? I was about to ask. We They... Do not answer this first. No, I don't no, think. And, and 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 we start the not answering by the fact that we don't have a specific time that he went to sleep that we can now cling to or whatever. You know, usually a, a, <laughs> the, the the it was all a dream movie has that yeah. moment where like oh he hit his head at the beginning and that's where he's gonna wake up. But no, we don't know if why he really got hit by the car. We don't know if the fucking giant with the sorcery powers really happened or anything. But at some point, yeah, it was the all a just dream. Pushed him back into bed. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> entirely real. Knocked him unconscious that- along the. No less realistic than the explosion that put him outside (laughs) 10 feet hanging from nothing. I mean, why wouldn't a wave be able to push you back into that apartment? (laughs) One of the cars just drives up the side of the building. (laughs) The giant magician gets out, brings him back to life. (laughs) Yeah, so he immediately checks to see if the him being bald was part of the dream, too. But no, it it, it wasn't. (laughs) Um, I've been there. I've been there. (laughs) And then he's having flashbacks to part of the dream that he wasn't present for. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. And uh then he walks to the window and he's like, "Oh, look, there's no new information outside credits." Basically. Well, <laughs> but, but he gets a phone call first and 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 he's like, "You know, oh yeah, I overslept." He's like, "What time is it? Noon?" And he's like, "No, the sun didn't rise today." What? So- that's what his friend says, on the, and then so he looks out the window, and there's sort of an ominous thing, and apparently he, he lives in Metropolis or whatever, but we're supposed to to know something at this point that we didn't know before he looked out the window, and it was dark and cloudy, like the fact, I, 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 I have no fucking idea. No questions answered. No. No, no yeah. idea what the hell was going on. I guess we're now done watching this movie, because it's over. <laughs> yep. 
Who thought we would miss a distant thunder? <laughs> <laughs> miss the cohesiveness and the fine acting and special effects of a distant thunder. Holy shit. <laughs> they killed shit. a horse. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, God, this was so fucking bizarre. And I wanted to note one thing on the credits. Um, It goes straight from cast to special thanks. There is no crew listed in this movie. <laughs> so mm. at least they were being honest there. Um, So, all right. Oh, and then, of course, we get a, a Quran quote and ridiculous amounts of echo to close yeah. the whole thing out. Call in the next 10 minutes and you won't go to hell while supplies last. <laughs> the Quran. <laughs> right. Be Muslim. Now, <laughs> I, I turned it off just in case it shocked me with lightning. I, I, you, you can't be too safe. <laughs> you never know. You never know. All right, so can it ever be this good again? Oh. I mean, I hate to just throw it out there like life is just going to be downhill from this point on. But There's I, I still just... vultures of horror, too. That's true. That was exactly what was in my head. And there's also <laughs> more movies by moralvision.tv, guys. So Yeah, right. Now, we're going to get to the point where when fucking David A.R. White comes out with a new movie, we're going to be like, oh, thank God. <gasps> oh, man, the great cinema. Yeah, the special effects will Not be Not as good as awesome. Entourage, mind you, but it's great. <laughs> Who will turtle try to fuck this? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'd love to rate this on some kind of numeric scale, but who the fuck knows what kind of numerals Arabic people use? So instead, <laughs> we're going to assess this film with a quick question. What is the worst thing that you could have wasted the $11 budget of this movie on that still would have been better than this movie? Ooh, um, I'd buy everyone a round of beer liquor whiskey <laughs> seltzer. <laughs> Juice, dose, I like acid, mine on the rocks. Meth drink on the rocks. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with a, a family dishonoring greeting card for Kevin Sorbo. He knows what it means. He knows what it means. Put some bacon inside me. Everyone tweet to Kevin Sorbo. Put some bacon inside of me. And while that does it for our review of Day When Sun Rises in the West, film that shock the world, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to reset the trap for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? What the bleep do we know? Oh, my God. We've been saving this one, y'all. We've been saving this we've one. We've been looking forward to this one. If you ever wondered... What would come out if I slammed Deepak Chopra's head against the school desk for 37 minutes and then made a wish that whatever came out would turn into a movie? That's what the bleep do we know. It is all the... And here's the thing. We do religious movies, and there's not that much religion in it. Because no, no. it's so full of bullshit that if they had added God, they would have needed to create an entire other movie. It's just good old-fashioned not understanding how things work, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, well, I gotta say, I actually have seen this movie before. I was living with a bunch of hippies when this came out, and one of the fucking hippies brought it in, and I had to, like, I sat there meticulously with him for weeks trying to break this down and explain to him why none of the, no, water doesn't get mad when you yell it. Okay, I'm spoiling shit. I'll have to save all this stuff for next week. But like I said, I've wanted to do this one so bad because it's, it, technically it's not religious, but this is a goddamn religion. This quantum woo bull shit Deepak Chopra nonsense that is a fucking religion and we're gonna lampoon that one it's overdue you can't just say quantum and not be wrong because you said quantum <laughs> in your sentence that doesn't change this movie the, would beg the to differ the value of the things you, you said you said you were into quantum anal you know, quantum <laughs> my new try quantum anal buy your quantum anal t-shirts <laughs> godawfulmovies.com so with that to look forward to we'll bring episode 50 to a merciful close once again huge thanks to all our patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among their ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode you can also help us out a ton by leaving us a five star review on itunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist and the skeptic Rat, available on itunes stitcher and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a breakfast club close. <laughs> Fazal's <laughs> flashbacks eventually helped him win a million dollars on a trivia game show. <laughs> Muhammad fucked kids. <laughs> he did. The daughter went on to sneeze in public, so her father stabbed her in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> Beep.
Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Bing bong. <laughs> Quantum anal, the superposition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one no, guy. It. One guy. <laughs> or all the guys. <laughs> There's no way that we could You can't know. tell. We looked at it. <laughs> How many basketballs are in my mouth? <laughs> the hardest part of Eli's job is that we have to ask him for 15 seconds or so to be silent. Okay, that so sounded like 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.